Um, uh, is it possible to uh, just uh, unrecord one one person? I mean, when I say don't record me, but you can. I I'm not I'm okay with it, but don't just not me. Um, uh, John, I'm not sure it is possible. I, I can't I can't select like that. I don't have that option. Oh, okay. I got it. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so um, we'll just jump right in. <laughs> and to start us off, uh, we have from Greece, Athens, Greece, Sifu Dimitris Zero and Spiros, I hope I'm pronouncing everybody's names right, Spiros Boviatsos Sensei. Uh, Dimitra Sifu has been practicing Tai Chi and Qigong for 27 years, teaches mainly in Athens, occasionally in Spain and Europe. She's Yudansha in Aikido, and tr they both train in Aikido and uh, Iaido. Iaido. Dimitra is also an amazing um, environmental filmmaker. She works with doctors of the world, doing healing and empowerment work with women victims of trafficking. And uh, Spiro Sensei is third Don. He's been training in Aikido for 20 years and Iaido for 12 years. He runs the Aikido Zen Center in Athens. And uh, I just do want to say that we know all these people from uh, our training across borders programs, Aikido Middle East Project, uh, Budo for Peace, Martial Arts for Peace, and the Peace Camp Initiative. So welcome. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, Hello. We're going to split the two, the three, four minutes between me and Spiros. And um, I just wanted to say uh, regarding the questions that here in Greece, we also experienced the lockdown like in other countries of the world. So we are just sharing this experience with the rest of the world. And um, uh, the question that you asked Jamie about how, how the practice in Aikido has affected, in what way it has affected our lives and what we are experiencing. I think that the first thing that comes to mind is that both from my practice in Aikido and Tai Chi, one basic thing that we're training is when, when something comes at you is to, to start and keep your spirit together, your mind together, not, not react to it like crazy and just um, deal with fear and keep your center and move with it, not just freeze and react to it. So that, that's something that through the years it has passed through the body mind. And I think this is, when I was thinking about it, I think this is the first thing that has really helped my practice has helped is not to panic with fear, not to keep your center, keep your spirit together and be able to help yourself and possibly help other people, your family and others. And um, before um, passing the word to Spiros who owns his own dojo, since our sensei uh, passed away here in Greece a few years ago, uh, Spiros has done a big effort and he has opened up his big, uh, his new dojo in Athens, uh, the Aikido Zen Center. And uh, I train there at his dojo since our sensei passed away. So I, I pass the word to Spiros Boviatos. Thank you all. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Yes, okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much and for letting, letting me share my opinion or the way we live in Athens. So uh, we practice with Dimitra together so many years, for so many years. And um, at this time, well, with uh, our dojo, with our sensei, Yanis, who's passed, uh, we used to practice meditation and uh, we try to see the, the things with Aikido in the inside, not only the outside. For instance, um, the lockdown is not um, a very big problem if somebody can see it from the internal point of view because when we stay at home, uh, we can enjoy so many things. I enjoy my little son. Um, we do so many things together now and um, it's something like new for me because I, I live with him uh, 24 hours. It's, it's very nice and we, we learn, we practice school at home and stuff like this. Um, Aikido has taught us to blend in and to adapt. So this is the main thing for me and for our students. We, we have something like uh, Sensei Quentin is doing every Thursday 
every Wednesday and Friday we do the uh, a session. So we talk about Aikido and uh, the main thing is that um, it's nice to adapt to every situation and see the good thing in each situation from the inside to live the moment in any situation. So uh, this is uh, the main thing that I would like to share with you. Thank Beautiful. you so much. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so um, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to go to Jordan now with Ayman Almohasin Sensei. Uh, he is the adoring father, I can tell you, of two young children, a boy and a girl. He is the country director of an NGO that works to empower refugees from Syria, Sudan, Iraq, and other nationalities that come into Jordan. Uh, and he, they work through sports education and psychosocial interventions. Ayman Sensei has a special focus on helping young girls to be strong and healthy through uh, working with them through Aikido and sports physical education. And he also attended both our training across borders in 2005 and 2015. So we'll hear about um, the situation in Jordan and uh, be interesting to hear as well about um, what's going on with uh, the refugees and, and different groups of people in Jordan. Ayman Sensei, onegashimasu. Ayman, are you here? Uh, he might be having a little trouble getting on Zoom. So we may go back to, to Ayman Sensei if he's not here. Okay, so we'll come back. Um, we'll move to Israel now and to Anat Ben Meir Ofer. She's a very good friend and some training since 1989 in Israel, also in the Bay Area. She's one of my very favorite UKs, I have to throw in there, <laughs> join her. She lives in Zichon Yaakov in Israel. She works as a clinical research coordinator at the Rambam Medical Center, which is the largest such facility in central Israel. Her department is internal medicine, and it was recently converted to a corona department. So she'll be able to give us a little more perspective as well on, um, you know, working in the medical field during the corona crisis. Anat, onegashimasu. I know she's here, I saw her. Just a second. <laughs> How do I unmute? Just a second. You are unmuted, we can't hear you. We can hear you on that. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. And by okay. Um, yeah, um, I'll tell you a little bit how I uh, came across the Aikido. <laughs> it's a little bit of a funny story. So as Jamie said, I'm in the Aikido world since uh, uh, 1988, actually. So around the age of uh, 20, when I finished my service in the army and started my BA uh, studies in physical therapy, I was looking for something that might help calm the turbulent soul of a young woman. <laughs> and since the, the world of uh, physical activity was my domain, I intuitively felt that some kind of martial art uh, will provide me with the right tools. So I went shopping in different martial arts dojos. I watched ninjutsu classes, capoeira, karate, and finally Aikido. And I hadn't even heard the name before. But nonetheless, the first minute into the class, I knew I found what I was looking for. And then after living for seven years in the Silicon Valley, we came back to Israel and I, uh, um, I made a career change and became a clinical study coordinator uh, at the center that uh, uh, Jamie mentioned. Um, uh, after Ramba Medical Center is the largest center in Northern Israel and recently, uh, they made the largest uh, underground fortified uh, uh, hospital in the world in the center. And all this um, fortified hospital, it has been converted to, uh, right now, to, uh, to hospitalize up to 900 corona uh, diagnosed patients and up to 300 intubated ones. 
Um, if you are interested, just in case to see the, uh, the old uh, place, I uh, have here, I don't know if you can see it, the, um, I'll, I'll put it closer, the URL address. It's pretty interesting to see the, uh, the, lot, the, the work they put there. So right now at the hospital, there are two designated corona wards, but only 66 patients have been hospitalized so far uh, due to corona. Only four have died, and at the moment we have only six patients, and none of them are, is a, on a, a, are on a ventilator. So in Israel, we took, we are taking a lot of uh, preemptive actions uh, to be ready when the coronavirus struck here. And so far with pretty good results. Um, a lot of adaptations are made and basically the hospital is very, very quiet. Um, all elective work was stopped and people are avoiding coming if not absolutely necessary. And it's interesting to see how much of what we are familiar with in the Aikido, in the Aikido world to deal with the unexpected uh, was expressed in dealing with the pandemic here. How you need to be flexible, as you said before, adjustive, flowing and calm and not hysterical. And at the same time to know that you might be wrong, but not let it paralyze you, as uh, we heard before. Um, it was still, it was and still is a lot of trial and error. Uh, should we go this direction or that direction? And you can't really know till you went there, since nobody was there before to tell you. Well, we did try to learn fast from other states that were hit hard, like China and Italy, or almost none like South Korea. But how to the climate and the culture here will change the course of the virus, nobody really knows. So truly the confusion and fear levels were huge. But how you react to this confusion, fears, and the unknown, being calm and centered, that's actually what uh, we learned at the Aikido wall. That was, that's what I was looking at the age of 21, and that's what I practice now in real life at the age of 53. <laughs> so that's what awesome. <laughs> to that, that's really interesting. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, just in the interest of time, and if you do, if you're speaking and you hear a little bell, that's what that is, just a little warning. But thank you. That was really great. Um, so we're going to go to Turkey now, and we have four uh, senseis from Turkey. And they've all participated in our training across borders program. Uh, Jana Bugde Sensei, uh, Ut Utku Havik, Ipek Susoy, and Koksul Mus. Koksul is now uh, living in Boston. Uh, the others are in Ankara. They've been training for many years. Um, and Ipek and Utku are our uh, now married dancing team couple. They're amazing. <laughs> and uh, Jana also teaches there. He's very busy with his work. So uh, let me welcome them. You guys will each have, since there's so many from Turkey, about you know one and a half, two minutes to share with us. So welcome uh, from Turkey. The guys who are going to be interviewed now, you'll need to unmute yourselves because trying to find you in a sea of 100 people is a bit difficult. So you can unmute yourselves. I think Hello. I have. Thank you. Well done, Rob. Hello, everyone from Ankara. Oh. Hello, everyone from Ankara. Um, as, as Jamie said, we met with many of you from training across, across borders in Greece. Uh, Turkey is in partial lockdown, I think they call it, because some people are keep still working. But at March 16th, they, all, they closed all, all schools, universities, um, cafes, sports centers and stuff like that. And this uh, uh, affected us personally because about a year ago, year and a half ago, we opened a private dojo and we are teaching Aikido um, for young people, children, youth and adults. Also yoga, BGG and stuff. But since 
March 16th, we are at home. <laughs> so we are very social distancing. And, um, but, uh, but Utku is still giving lessons via Zoom three times a week. And it is, it changed when, when, um, many things because we were just sitting at home and now we can talk to people and we can share stuff still. So um, meeting like this is also very helpful. We try to do them um, on, a, on a basis mm -hmm. with, with our sensei, Nebu, Nebu sensei. And it is very good to meet many people, to see them that they all in the same position as ours. That is not just our problem, but it's the whole world and many people are suffering from it also. And then thank you for, for all. Nice to see you all. Uh, it really relaxes us to see you in good shape and good health. Uh, yes. <laughs> we hope that to see you on Tatami as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Jadar from Ankara again. Uh, uh, it's nice to see you here because I know you from, I know most of you from 2015, 2015 and 2005. Uh, IKEA extension seminars. As they, as it, 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 it said, um, there are some uh, physical and mental um, uh, effects that coronavirus issue to us. But the best thing about Aikido, I think it's, um, I always know that I can stand up after I fall. So this is the most important thing I learned from Aikido. So, uh, with that, I always know that I can always pass these days. So, and also, as they said again, uh, last week we had an, another Zoom uh, session with our sensei. There were 350 people uh, at the webinar from about 15 or 20 countries, something like that. It was also nice to see the people that everybody is having uh, similar problems. Everybody is fighting similar against uh, similar things. So that made me feel that I'm not alone. Uh, so this is another thing, uh, very important thing uh, from the Aikido years here. Thank you. Hello, this is Koksa. Uh, I used to live in Ankara and I used to train with Utku Ipek and Janer in Ankara. Three years ago, I moved to Boston for work. Now I'm teaching as a professor at the university. Anyway, so here I start my own dojo so that I keep practicing Aikido. And I'm really enjoying it here. And after this uh, self-isolation thing, actually it helped me to survive because it helps me to work out and everything. But uh, I think the most important thing is besides this physical workout, uh, uh, thanks to Aikido, I'm still in touch with people. I'm still socializing, even I isolate myself in my own house. I am still keep socializing with the people, and thanks to this big Aikido family, it helps me to, you know, not to feel alone, and then uh, spending my, day, my days very productive. So that this was also a very good opportunity to bring people from different countries. countries. Thanks for the organizers. I don't actually know who organized this. I just saw it on, on Facebook and then I, I said, okay, this is the meeting that I should attend. So I'm happy to be here and then thanks for the organizer and thanks for everyone being here and sharing this lonely moment uh, with us and then not letting us feel lonely here. Okay, thank you. Wow, thank you all. You guys are all my heart and I think we're all in each other's hearts already. So thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, we'll go back to Israel, to Eitan Ben Meir Shihan, uh, who I have known. We actually were showed on Ho together back in the Bay Area in 1979. He is truly the, uh, the, essentially the first founding father of Aikido in Israel. He started the first uh, big dojo uh, in Florentine in Tel Aviv, I think in 1982. Uh, he's a computer software engineer, lives now in Zichron Yaakov. He's the dojo cho of Aikido Carmel. And he is a very guiding force in Aikido Israel and uh, a, a dear friend and Aikido colleague I, I treasure. So, Eitan Sensei, onage, uh, Shihan, onage shimasu. So, uh, 
I don't, uh, I'm not sure I have anything interesting to say. Uh, you know, I'm like everybody else, you know, staying at home, uh, trying to uh, find uh, ways to do Aikido that I didn't know about before. Uh, I just finished teaching uh, a Zoom class uh, about an hour ago, uh, which was an interesting experience. And uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, I don't, if you pull my tongue, you know, I can talk for a long time. So I don't know if you want to do that. Ma, ma you rabbi Aretz? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm looking at everything. I mean, it's an opportunity to look at the world as if it's a new world. You know, it's an important thing. I mean, we are used to looking at things as if we know them. We may, we make ourselves comfortable by believing that everything is as we know it. And, and actually, we don't know anything. And this is an opportunity to meet that uh, idea, really, because the world is changing around us and we don't know how, for how long, and uh, what will come after this. And it's good for us to be, I think, to, to be open to what we don't know. It's an opportunity. This is how I feel about it. Thank you, Eitan. Uh, spoken just like you. <laughs> and very, very true. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to welcome Talal Johas from uh, East Jerusalem, a Palestinian East Jerusalem in Israel. He's been training for eight years. And as he told me, he is a practicer, not an Aikido master, uh, which I think we all share. <laughs> he trains in the old city in Jerusalem with Shahide Abu Ramallah Sensei who came to our very first Training Across Borders conference in 2005. Uh, and Talal, I believe, has uh, lived some in, in the US as well. So welcome, Talal. Thank you, Jimmy. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Uh, as Jimmy said, I started uh, Aikido eight years ago. And uh, I think I was really fortunate. It was the encouragement of my sensei, Shehbe. Uh, who is a great teacher, and uh, we practiced it twice a week uh, uh, prior to this, uh, uh, this problem now. And, uh, and, and uh, really this, uh, I worked also in, at Arab Bank, I'm a manager at the risk department. Uh, my title is middle office controller. Uh, we'd be, we're working several hours now in alternative buildings just to avoid the to avoid the pandemic uh, coronavirus. Um, thank God my family, my neighbors, my friends around are okay. Uh, this is a mutual uh, problem as most of the, the other speakers just mentioned and I think we are shared around the globe and maybe that's what put us in concern about what's happening everywhere. They worry about numbers of uh, death or uh, or people got Are we having a little connectivity problem, everybody? Thing. Can I keep on? Yes. Yes. Okay. And the kind of people which I really started to meet and to learn to see how. Jamie, I think you better move on. Yeah, I think we're, yeah, uh, maybe we can come back to Talal. He's having just a little Wi Fi issues. So uh, we'll try to come back. Uh, is and uh, which create no opponents on the, the contrary the connection or what? communication problem yes uh, okay. some people are hearing him fine um sorry uh, yeah that's so interesting what you're saying talal thank you okay thank you um so we're going to uh, move to robin arkia sensei and he is one of the leading Palestinian Goju Karate and Kobudo senseis in 
uh, in Israel. Uh, he's been training for 47 years since the age of seven. He's been a, <laughs> he's been a physical education teacher for 30 years. He works with the Ministry of Education in Israel. He also works on the staff of Budo for Peace, which is martial arts for peace um, in Israel, which has been uh, started around the time our Ike Extensions training across borders began uh, around 2004 or five with uh, Danny Hakim Sensei. We'll hear a little more about that. But uh, Rabin Sensei and I were recently in the West Bank. We'll talk about that uh, together. And he runs the Arkea Brothers Dojo uh, in, uh, in Central Israel. So Rabin Sensei, welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Still a little boy. Hi, hi, uh, Rob and uh, Robert and uh, uh, Jamie and all. Um, thanks God, uh, I am safe and also my family. A uh, little bit worried. Uh, I have uh, a nurse. My, my son is a nurse and my uh, daughter is a dentist. So the situation here uh, complicated. And uh, we are as a parents, we are. Uh, a little bit worried about that. Um, as you know, here uh, things here in Israel, all of things freeze here. Uh, we have no activities. Uh, the same in our dojos, in Bed of Our Peace dojos, and in my own dojos also. Uh, so we uh, try to keep in touch uh, with our students and to teach uh, by Zoom. Uh, by WhatsApp also, uh, we're doing the best uh, to keep them, uh, all of them on, you know. Um, we are uh, martial artists, so we should uh, show courage, uh, and uh, we are models, you know. Uh, our students, uh, our, our family uh, uh, follow uh, us. And uh, mm -hmm. they're doing uh, things. Uh, you, you, we are so important for them. So, if you are a model, you should be a good model. We should uh, show courage, and, uh, and all the time uh, uh, search to change things. We didn't give up. We didn't give up. We, we personally, is my my. Uh, um, important things to keep touch with my students and to keep a practice, a personal practice. So I practice with my two sons here, Sanad and Karam. Uh, all of them, uh, two of them, uh, Sanad is uh, Nidan and uh, Karam is uh, Sandan. Uh, we are uh, daily have a uh, practice uh, together. So uh, the things it's not, not, uh, not uh, you know, we are, we are didn't know what will happen here in Israel. Uh, also in schools, uh, in the Arabic sector here in Israel, that's what I live, uh, the corona increase uh, in the last uh, week. So people fled here. So uh, people didn't uh, go out uh, homes here. Uh, that's a situation. Um, we we all the time uh, try to adapt uh, ourselves to the change mm -hmm. and that's it excellent thank you and uh I'll bring you to the good health of your of your family yes uh, rabin is, uh, yes yes you have amazing family <laughs> so rabin uh, uh, in working with budo for peace they are budo for peace is mostly youth programs and has uh kind of paired uh, Arab Jewish uh, martial arts schools, mostly karate, but we are kind of the Aikido branch, our arm of, of Budo for Peace. We yeah. do many trainings together. Um, and uh, uh, thanks to Robert Ken Sensei, who is here and keeping time. He is the president of Aiki, uh, Aiki Extensions for many years now. We've been working together. He um, founded the Peace Camp Initiative. We are in our, well, we were going to be in our, I think, 12th summer, 11th to 12th summer. We bring uh, Christian, Muslim, and Jewish kids from the Middle East in Budo for Peace programs to one of the oldest summer sports camps in America every summer. Um, so we're going to hear from some of our Peace Camp uh, alumni who've been in recent years, and uh, Rabin Sensei's sons have been there as well. So Shadi Hijazi, I hope, is here. He's 17 yeah, years old. He's a high school senior in the Palestinian town of Tamra, 
where I've been fortunate to visit and teach in northern Israel. This is his 13th year out of 17, practicing Shotokan Karate. He earned his black belt at age 16, and he's part of Budo for Peace programs, and I went to peace camp in 2016. He has started his own group of little karate kids, and they are continuing to train now during the coronavirus on Zoom. So welcome, uh, Shadi. So hi, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, uh, looking at the circumstances now uh, with the coronavirus thing and the quarantine so you know uh, as a student now we are sitting at home and we, we don't have to work you know I closed my store I own a cell phone store I closed I can't work the coronavirus in my town is increasing incredibly uh, two days ago we also lost a great woman from our town so uh, we've been trying to make things positive in our town uh, for me as a karate teacher also now uh, we've been making uh, Zoom sessions for the little children, you know, to just, it's a new thing for, ch new thing for children to learn uh, with, the, just to train karate next to a PC or a cell phone. You know, it's just a great opportunity for them to see something new in uh, this situation. And uh, also we're trying to keep the positive vibes uh, up and uh, to cheer the boys and children, you know, that's just, there's hope, just don't give up. And uh, yeah, everyone is uh, taking care of uh, each other. No one's get, getting outside the doors or things like that. No one's walking his dog. <laughs> and yeah, everything's fine now. Uh, we are uh, taking control of everything here. Excellent, Shadi. And your English <laughs> is so awesome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sensei. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Us. Um, Malak Taburi is 19 years old. She also lives in Tamwa and trains with Mahmoud Hagazi Sensei, who is a main Budo for Peace Partner as well, who is, I understand, currently in quarantine there in Tamwa for safety's sake. And Malek has been a karate student training at the Tamwa Center since she was five years old. So I want to welcome Malek. If Malik is here. Uh, Rob, have you managed to find him? I, I haven't. I've been looking. I've got three screens. To work okay. Through the software that well, bounces we, people between screens depending on how much noise they're making or something. And well, so you keep it, looking for Malik, and I'm right. going to invite Russell I, I, and Ryan to hold yep. until we find Malik. Okay. I want to, we'll go to the West Bank, and uh, Ryan. Toho is, I believe, 15, 14 or 15 now. She's a karate student in Tulkaram, which is in the West Bank. Last summer, she and uh, Jafar, who is here, were our very first youth from the West Bank to join the peace camp delegation of uh, Arab and Jewish martial arts for peace kids who, who come to a peace camp. They were chaperoned by her sister, Rosal, who is also here. And Rosal works with the Project Common Bond from Tuesday's Children, which is a program that helps young people heal from trauma who have lost a loved one to terror or violence. So um, they are just such beautiful souls. And uh, um, I just want to welcome Rosal and Ryan right now from the West Bank. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm really sad because uh, everything is closed. And yeah, I'm enjoying my time with uh, my family. Um, yeah. So, hey everyone, it's our pleasure to be in this meeting. So, uh, as everyone uh, knows, so, uh, so as the one who's studying in, uh, I, am, I, I am a student, I'm a computer engineering, so uh, I have so much uh, classes, online classes, so I'm trying as much as I can to spend like every specific minute in my life. So. Um, so, um, so we are now, um, like everything here is, uh, is totally good because uh, the prime minister in Palestine, uh, he took control from the first injured here in Palestine. So, uh, so thanks God we are fine. And, um, and yeah, I guess this virus, like it's, it's like a shoot for, for the world. Like the world becomes so much selfish and they care just about money. So uh, it, it's time for us to go back to, 
to God and to go back to, to ourselves, to think back. And, uh, and yeah, I hope uh, we get back, uh, we can meet uh, like in reality, all of us, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, from Tulkaram, I also uh, just would like to have uh, Karen Abuzant maybe say hello and Jaffer if you are here. Karen, just so you know our connection to Tulkaram, Karen runs uh, the Peace Education Center that she created in Tulkaram and she teaches English and prepares Palestinian youth there to participate in all kinds of uh, peace, uh, peace programs, teaches English uh, also for uh, kids to, to go to the university in Nablus. She is a tremendous partner in peace. She grew up in Ohio, married a Palestinian man who uh, I have a crush on, <laughs> Jasser, and uh, uh, they raised their five children who are now grown in the West Bank. So if you just want to say hello, Karen and Jaffer, maybe a quick hello, who, who is a star athlete and is a peace camp participant. Remember to unmute yourselves. Well done. Uh, hello? Hey, husband. Yeah, Karen, hi. Karen. Now I'm not going to talk if you have a crush on my husband. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, can you just tell us a little about what's going on with COVID in the West Bank and, and maybe in Gaza? Well, like Russell said, actually, um, the PA did a, a pretty good job of, of shutting things down from the very beginning, from the first uh, cases in Bethlehem. And um, they've, been, uh, they've been good at testing and, and keeping things closed. And, and for the most part, people are, are going according to, to plan and, and uh, taking it seriously, which is really good. Um, we've, had, we've had a few incidences of uh, some workers that, that work in Israel and they come back with the virus. This is, this is why it's still going on. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't really have it going on anymore because the, the, the cases that came from Greece actually uh, were controlled in Bethlehem. But then the workers coming, coming back from Israel um, came back with the virus, unfortunately. Some of them were very good about it and went home and, uh, and put themselves under quarantine and some of them didn't. <laughs> so, you know, cause you have young men, they want to get out and they want to be with their friends and that's understandable, but we have to care about others, not just ourselves. But, um, and that's, that's going on all over the world. And, uh, and I, we sit here and we watch TV and we, we see what else is going on all over and we can say, thank God, we don't have it bad here not like the other places. But I have students that are in Spain uh, and other places all over the world, and I really worry about them. Um, they're, they're there studying like for a semester, and uh, it's, it just it scares me because they have to be there and they're alone as well. It's not like, you, like here, thank God I'm with my family, but there they're not with their family and they're, they're alone and, and they're secluded and it's, it's not a very nice situation. Um, I'm really trying to keep things going, and and um, I, I want to start. I want to start classes on Zoom because I, number one, I'm bored, and number two, it, when you when you take this hiatus, it really impairs uh, studying English. This is for sure, and also I want I want a way to keep everyone connected. So um, now that. I'm getting the Zoom thing down. I hope hopefully I can keep up with that. But we had Rabin and, and Jamie here just a couple of months ago, and the the kids just loved it. I, they had such a good time, and it was such a connection. And I really hope that we can keep it up. Awesome. Thank you, Karen, and thank you for all you do. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Jaffer, do you want to just say a, a, a hello, a minute? If you're here, I think you're here. Uh, Jaffer, maybe. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Well, if we see Jaffer later, we'll bring him back. <laughs> um. So we're going to go to Kenya now. And Francis Wachira uh, is here. Uh, he calls himself Tiger Frank on his Facebook, which I just love. And he is a school teacher. He's the proud father of a beautiful two-year-old son. They live in Nairobi, Kenya. 
which has been quite in the news for um, some things uh, in relation to COVID. Maybe he can share. He's been training for nine years. He received his black belt last year at the Don Test in Ethiopia with Tesfai Tekalu Sensei, who will join us later. And he has two dojos, Karatina. He has 20 students and the Mangu Dojo, which he has 30 young students. So welcome, Tiger Frank from Nairobi. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Okay, my, my full names are Francis, I'm uh, Washira. I'm, uh, currently, I'm 30 years old. Uh, I started uh, training uh, when I was uh, eight years, but I started with uh, Taekwondo, and I did uh, much uh, of training of many martial arts before I landed uh, uh, in Aikido. And I loved Aikido uh, because of the knowledge of uh, that it gives someone and uh, what it entails about uh, self-discipline and uh, much more in, in that. Uh, much of it, uh, the other part, I love, uh, I have been training Aikido for the past nine years. Uh, but uh, last year is the time I did my test. In uh, I've been uh, training without doing the test because of uh, here in Kenya, Aikido is uh, has been introduced some few uh, years ago, and uh, we currently did not have a, a dojo. But uh, through Test Five Sensei. Uh, he has introduced Aikido also here in Kenya, and we are moving on establishing Aikido in much parts of uh, Kenya. Uh, 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 about COVID-19, currently in Kenya, we have uh, 250, uh, 225 uh, people who have been confirmed and uh, nine who have died and uh, 52 who have been uh, discharged from, uh, who have been uh, cured. Uh, in what I love about Aikido, uh, what Aikido has given me or has taught me to, is to remain calm and to know that uh, there is assurance of uh, diverse, uh, or something to divert my mind out of uh, this uh, pandemic. Because uh, when you think about it so much, you get uh, into stress and you get into other, you think that the world is ending. But uh, when you are trained or when you know about Aikido and when you know uh, that there's still hope of uh, tomorrow. So thank you and I uh, hope to share more and more some other time. Thank you. How is your family? My family is quite okay. And uh, my son and my brothers and sisters and also my students are all okay. Uh, we have been keeping in touch through WhatsApp because uh, Zoom is uh, a bit uh, complicated here in uh, because of the network. So I've been contacting them through WhatsApp video and uh, others will communicate through calls. Uh, so you so have... All Okay. Yeah. The government the government controls the Wi-Fi, yes. You don't always have Wi-Fi there, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, so from uh, Kenya, we're going to Tanzania, a very good friend of, of uh, Francis, and that is uh, Mohamed Moody Matu Sensei. I want to welcome him from Dar es Salaam. His native tongue is Swahili, and uh, Francis may translate if we need from Swahili, but uh, we'll see. And uh, Moody Sensei has been training for 13 years under Katsuta Sensei uh, from Japan. He runs the Bagamoyo Aikido Club and the Scorpion Aikido Club, and uh, is a wonderful Aikidoist, and I've gotten to uh, be a little bit in one of his classes, and they have a lot of seminars in Tanzania. So welcome, uh, Moody Sensei.
so, is Moody here, Francis? Oh, good. Yes. No, no. no, no. I think uh, Moody has not yet come. So. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll see. He he might have had trouble getting on Zoom. We'll we'll see if that's true. Um, yeah. I want to circle back to the Peace Camp kids, and in Israel, and I want to welcome Tali and Mayan Hakim. And the, it, they are the daughters of Paul Hakim Sensei, who is one of the Hakim Achim, which in Hebrew means the Hakim brothers. So Paul Sensei uh, and Danny Sensei, of course, are the um, main uh, people. Danny founded Budo for Peace. They, uh, as far as I know, grew up in Egypt and Australia is, and then uh, immigrated to Israel some years back. Tali has been training in karate for seven years. She's a second Q brown belt. Her sister Mayan has been training for five years and is a brown belt, third Q, and they, of course, train under their, their uncle and their, their father. They've been to our peace camp in Pennsylvania, and I would like to say, um, um, welcome, girls. Thank you. Well, I'm just gonna say it's a very uh, frustrating but um, weird situation, all this coronavirus thing, and um, about the peace camp, um, I would say it's such an amazing experience and also seeing all these people like from so many places having a common um, thing and also all this coronavirus that we all mostly staying at home together and um, maybe training like we have um, in Zoom uh, karate training. It's uh, very different, but um, it's fun though. <laughs> like it keeps us uh, and fit and like um, seeing each other, socializing, like seeing other people. It's very, yeah. Well, we um, the girls have been uh, training three times a week. We've uh, we've been zooming everybody. Hi everyone from Israel. <laughs> well, we're all in the same well. room, <laughs> everyone in the whole wide world. So thank you, Jamie and Robert. How are you doing? Uh, mm, great to today. see you. It's, it's, it's great that uh, this, we're all connected, irrespective of what uh, martial arts or whatever. We're all one big, uh, big family. And uh, it's just uh, fantastic being online with everyone here. It's an interesting opportunity where the situation allows us to um, you know, make lemonade out of lemons, but basically, you know, we're, we're just making, you know, how martial arts do is to rise up to the challenge and utilize it the best we can and uh, make it a positive event. And that's what I know what Aikido people doing, very positive stuff. So uh, same in the karate world here. What are you continuing to do uh, with Budo for Peace? Well, we've had uh, every, every week, um, we have uh, the uh, instructors meet on Zoom. We've had a recent competition uh, with all the kids uh, and kids all over, all sectors. We have Bedouin children in the uh, Negev Desert. We have the uh, friends, our uh, Israeli Arab friends up north. We have the Jewish groups here in Tel Aviv and Renana. And uh, we had a kata competition. Everyone gave it like a two minute kata. It wow. doesn't matter what style of karate or aikido. And a couple of judges and the uh, winner gets a free uh, uniform, a gi. And actually one of the kids got it down south in Beresheva and he donated it to one of the kids up north who generally don't have enough money to afford one. So we've seen some really nice generosity coming out, out of this as well. Mm, that's awesome. Can you just tell us also a little bit about Hazem uh, since in his Bedouin uh, dojo, which is thriving, and he's been a very strong active partner um, in Budo for Peace uh, and also um, uh, one of the girls came to peace camp. So just share a little bit about the people don't know about the Bedouin uh, I forget the name Bedouins of the desert or the karate champions of the desert. Yeah, okay So we have um, several hundred thousand Bedouins in Israel and um, Basically uh, They have been training with uh, Buddha for peace, peace since the onset from the beginning like for 10, 15, 10 years ago They made their dojo out of mud. It's quite amazing that the kids actually made their dojo out of mud. And the way they light up their dojo is got, they've got the car engine outside and they connect it and they've got one light bulb which lights up the whole dojo. So we, we're, we're like brothers, yeah? <laughs> so 
we actually train with them, we sleep over there, they make their beautiful dish, the molochea and the hummus and great times, we have great times together. And you know, we're training in the dojo and you see camels walking by. It's just an incredible situation here. But uh, again, uh, like, you know, martial arts are our borders. We're all one cultural um, uh, harmony together. It's quite beautiful. So uh, Hazem has been uh, at the forefront of uh, teaching many Bedouin children around the area, not just in his specific region, south of Beresheva, but also right deep in the desert of uh, the Negev Desert. Yeah. I just want to mention, I was fortunate some years ago, we all traveled together with these guys, the Hakim brothers, Hazem, and we went to uh, Jordan together and we taught with the uh, Royal Jordanian trainers of, uh, of the, uh, yeah, the Royal Jordanian uh, uh, National Victorious Karate Champions. And uh, so there's some of the cross borders experiences are really quite, quite amazing. Um, I remember, so, I remember we actually uh, trained some Syrian refugees, some children from Syria who, who had a uh, difficult time and uh, ran away from Syria. So it was just a, just wonderful doing these uh, beautiful things. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and we all have such opportunities to be together. I know for myself as a Jewish woman, uh, part is really to, um, you know, get to, to teach in karate schools and with uh, Muslim and Christian Arabs and Jews and everybody together. It's, um, it, you can't help but have your heart open. Um, on that note, I'll just share one quick thing. I, uh, after one of our training across borders uh, conferences, I was in the home in Amman with a sensei whose parents were actually refugeed um, in the 1967 war. And I was like the first Jewish person, he said, who'd ever been in their home. And he said, you know, you're making our life so difficult. We like to hate and now we can't. <laughs> and I think that that is the experience that we have so much when we get to together and that we have that vehicle through our martial arts to, not, to, to, to get together and to, 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 well, not right now we can't, but to touch and to hold hands and to punch and grab and roll and fall and do things together, learn together, a bow in equal respect. So that is really what the martial arts allows us to do. Thank you and Danny for, um, and all of you for your Budo for Peace work. Uh, I believe... Uh, I believe uh, Mohammed El Sayed Omar Sensei is here from Egypt. Did I see you, Sensei? Um, I hope that was you. Uh, we are just meeting for the first time. He's getting on Zoom for the first time. Or else that was, uh, I'm also meeting Moody Sensei. Uh, I saw somebody. Just going to give a minute to unmute just yourself. Or be here. I just unmuted Mohammed Sensei. Oh, good. Okay. So uh, Mohammed Sensei lives in Cairo, and he began training in 1980 with Kumaga Shihan from Japan. He runs the Egyptian Aikido Center and the Egyptian Aikido Association. His son, Abed El Rahman, is Sandan. Yusuf is Shodan. I really want to welcome them. And I, for myself, am just meeting for the first time Mohammed Sensei, thanks to uh, Noah Lamden, who teaches and trains in Jaffa in Israel. Uh, I had asked her to speak, and she referred me to Mohammed Sensei, so welcome. He's not got any video. Um, Does he have audio? I, I he think has got I audio, I've unmuted him. If it's Mohammed Idris. I'm afraid, no, that's one, Mohammed Idris is, is one that's, of his... Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, there's only one Mohammed on the call. Oh. Yep. Um, Mohammed just told me he's having trouble, um, so I'll just... No, will you, will you speak, um, uh, Bin Kuo? <laughs> um, well, I hope he'll join soon. I'll, I can just say hello and thank you everyone for sharing and being here. Can you tell us a little about um, what you do in Jaffa and what the situation is? Um, it's very cross-cultural, I know. Um, we're a very small dojo. Um, what I don't know what really to say. Okay. Or how you know how you know Mohammed Sensei from Egypt? Well, we just met in Japan in Niwama this summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was really nice meeting them over there, the Egyptian group. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much and for the the connection. Yeah, hope we hope that Yeah, well, we hope so too. Um so let's go to a different part of the world, to Brazil. 
we have several people from Brazil. And uh, uh, first, I just, uh, Jose Bueno Sensei, we didn't really plan so much, but if you're, I know you're here, if you'd like to say hello, Jose has been quite a partner in training across borders. He's been to both of our uh, big conferences in 2005, 2015. He uh, does just incredible work and uh, also ran for many years a dojo in the favelas of Brazil. Uh, so, uh, Jose Sensei, if you're here and want to say hello, uh, that would be terrific. Yes. Thought I saw that he was here. He was here, but he doesn't appear to be here now. Okay, well, so that, that is uh, Jose Bueno Sensei. We hope maybe he'll come back, but well, that's, I just saw Vitor Mito Moro Sensei. So, Vitor, welcome. Vitor has been training since 1999 and teaching at the Aikido de Via Dojo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, under the technical supervision of Dutra Sensei, Seventh Dan, and they're connected to the USAF. Vitor is leading a project to produce and distribute masks to frontline medical people in critical areas throughout Brazil. They need like 100,000 masks. Uh, they've been raising funds using 3D printers uh, and have already, I think, distributed maybe 20,000 masks. He's doing amazing work. He's just a, and he's like, he's the uke everybody wants <laughs> so, so, so we got some great folks on here <laughs> and uh vitor afterwards in the chat maybe you can put your website uh, for your masks but uh, please share with us welcome hello um glad to see you all here uh, uh, just to, to to know i have one minute and a half or three minutes because i see yuri and sender also i don't know well and say Robert two, will two that, yeah, the bell, two, right? Two yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, it's it's very good. I'm seeing a lot of uh, friends from Brazil also here in the the conference, and friends from Greece, uh, Gianna and Kosal, and everyone that I miss a lot to, to practice. Um, well, things here in Brazil are, uh, in my point of view, it's uh, really tough. We have a president that is. Um, it's not a good leader at all. <laughs> it's not helping us to to um, to act as a unit um, to prevent ourselves. Um, and the the hospitals are getting crowded, and we have some laws that um, make it slow for them to buy equipments and 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 protect the, the, the health um, professionals. So my main work is um, to work as a consultant as to, to social business. And because of this, I have a, a considerable network of projects and, and social entrepreneurs. One of them were making these masks and I was in my first week of, um, of uh, quarantine and kind of getting agitated like what can i do what should i do um i think one thing that i learned meeting you guys in greece that we are all connect very connected with our bodies and and for me it's not easy to stay quarantined in in my apartment so my mind was like i have to to go to action and have to act to, to do something. And I started researching this kind of how to produce this mask. I'm producing like for two weeks and a half now. Not yet reached this 20,000 masks that Sensei Jamie said, we, we're still in the 3,000 masks um, production. But um, I, I rally with some friends and and that's it. We're producing and we're um, gathering money very fast. The, um, and I think the connection with Aikido for me is this uh, one letter of Fo Sensei really struck me uh, that all Aikidokas were supposed to be good agents, like um, in that context of post war. Uh, where he see unbalance of physical and spiritual worlds, the Aikido practitioners could be good agents of balancing these things. And um, I really think that um, we can be very important 
in all these things that were mentioned before about falling and rising. And as we rise, what we'll see and what we'll do in this, all these conflicts and, and, and mess that we're seeing in the world as an unknown future. And I think Yuri wrote a beautiful letter also telling about the future that is unknown. Uh, but as an Aikido practitioner, we are, we're training to be present. And to be present, I think it would be a very good, good weapon, a good um, resource to have to help other people and, and help everyone that we can. Uh, the Thank Aikido so community, much, it's, it's kind of a mess. Everyone is trying to do what they can. And it's good to see all, all the guys here. I'm teaching online also. But, uh, and for this, I, it's very important, not, of the, not so much for me, the physical thing, but the group thing. The, we are a community. And I have to keep my 20 students connected because uh, we realize so many things happen when we meet, not only the practice, but after when we talk, when we hug, when we look in each other's eyes and all this makes a lot of, um, we miss all these things. And it's, I'm, I'm working on it, how to do it online classes, like a white belt again, and it's positive. Um, thank you, Victor, thank more you. more important to keep them together. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Thank you. And it's amazing to see that how many senseis in all these countries are able to use technology and use Zoom and WhatsApp to stay connected. And we all have that desire to physically be together, but uh, the, the social connection and keeping up our, our training, our philosophy is, is so, so amazing. So also from Brazil, we have Yuri Hazaz and Sandra Casaletto. Uh, they live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. They are uh, married in a, just a, uh, the sweetest power couple ever. Uh, they've trained for two decades and taught. Uh, they've had four dojos. At least five of their students now have their own dojos. They are focused more on nonviolent communication and incorporating verbal and physical Aikido into their very many peacemaking programs and retreats that they lead in Brazil and in other countries. So um, welcome to Yuri and Sandra. Hi, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. And hi, everyone. I, I will let Yuri speak. Um, I, I will stay quiet. <laughs> Sandra, I said I want to hear from you. <laughs> no, you said, you said what I was going to say. I was going to say that we've been practicing the uh, verbal Aikido mainly these days and holding spaces online on Zoom. And yeah, so you can speak more. Yeah, um, the way we, we've, been, we've been integrating Aikido to our... Uh, Nonviolent communication facilitation work and also working with other processes working with groups all over Brazil and in over 11 other countries around the world including initiatives in the West Bank and uh, And the thing is that now in this crisis, we just thought okay, how how can we be of service? Um, so what we've been doing is for different groups We've been holding space where people can come in and check in and and look into each other's eyes and hear each other out and we've been also holding open groups for the general community. And now we've, um, in the middle of organizing an initiative of all of our, we've invited out of all of our students, whoever wants to volunteer to offer empathic listening to frontline health workers that are going to still suffer the boom here in Brazil. We haven't reached that point yet, but we know that uh, stress response and trauma can be very deeply supported and transformed with some, um, some good empathic listening, holding empathic space for people to unload, to be heard, to, be, to feel they're not alone. So this is where we are right now. We're organizing this initiative and hopefully we'll be able to make some contribution. And just thank you, Jamie, for bringing all of us together. It's wonderful to hear everyone from different parts of the world. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um, it's really my, my honor and pleasure. All of you are so amazing and the work that people are doing. 
Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, there are people doing uh, relating nonviolent communication. Uh, you certainly are leaders in that. David Weinstock, say, who's up in uh, Washington. And um, uh, Luke Archer, I want to mention him. He lives in Ireland and France. He is conducting weekly verbal Aikido training. So that's something that you everybody can look into. I think he's putting that in the chat. Vitor has put his uh, masks project into the chat. So please do that. Uh, we have a few more speakers from Poland, from Ethiopia, and hopefully from Egypt, we'll see. Um, so before we do that, if you want to start thinking about any questions, you could write them in the chat and uh, Quentin will uh, keep an eye on that. So now I want to welcome uh, Szymek Goranski sensei from Poland. He's fifth on. He runs a, a very big dojo, over 100 practicing members in Warsaw. Uh, joined me in Ethiopia when we did uh, some great trainings in a, a summer camp in Hawassa several years ago. He, and we met at, uh, I, I didn't mention, Quinton runs an Ike Extending Conference in England. It was supposed to be every other year in this, this fall, which may be online, we're not sure yet. But So these are the ways that we have all connected, just the way we are now. This is how I know and we all know each other. Uh, these are really important connections. So uh, Szemek, I also want to say, is on the managing board of the Polish Aikido Federation. He is a leadership consultant and a change facilitator for individuals, teams, and organizations. He works with executives and top management in Europe. And uh, welcome, Szemek Sensei. Thank you, Jamie. I just, I, I've written down a few steps I want to go through to make it sure that I go through the three minutes. So first of all, Jamie, thank you for the personal invitation you reached out. Uh, thank you also, Quentin, to putting this on. Uh, Robert Kent for Ike Extensions. This is just a hard uh, blossoming uh, thing you're doing. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank also uh, Josh Gold for uh, opening the materials of Archive Journal. Uh, my, my students really appreciate that and uh, every week they have a great time watching it. It's great stuff. So, and all other friends, I, I just won't list everybody. Uh, beside Gertrude, the, the dog, Dan's dog, I have to mention her, uh, of course. And so, um, as for, for uh, coronavirus and Aikido, uh, it's, uh, I mean, Aikido is a really big support uh, uh, that I, I personally have, and I think my, my students also have. And uh, the, it gives us opportunity to, to practice the appreciation of the little things that we don't usually appreciate and that are just available at our hands, open hands, every day, every moment. But once you lose the, the possibility of touching that, it, it, you start to realize how important those little things are. So that's, that's one thing. And as for Aikido itself, uh, I've been doing it for over 30 years and just the, the, the calmness that comes uh, in front of unknown, I think is for me the personal, one of the biggest benefits uh, from the daily practice. But then I, I really want to emphasize the benefit of the community uh, and that we're having together as Aikido practitioners and in our dojo. We run Zoom classes and I think besides, I mean, practicing together is probably just an excuse uh, to say it in this way, but being together and sharing, venting and sharing our frustration or uh, fear or anxiety or whatever, I think in an understanding community, and VC was mentioned, I think it's one of the key elements that Aikido is a physical, uh, and psychological expression of also of NVCs, and that brings both things together. So uh, being together, and, uh, and we also hold a virtual party uh, every 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 week that we meet together with a glass of wine or a glass of beer or a glass of coffee or tea, whatever, and we just hang hang in there together and talk about everything because we're more than just practitioners on the mat. We share our lives together. And uh, as far as the situation in Poland. Uh, we've been, I think, all the stuff that our government has actually screwed up, I, I think, personally, I'm sorry, it really sucks, but one of the good things that really good did, did good is to close down Poland, and it closed the border, uh, and for, like, business-wise, it was dramatic, it is dramatic, and the, out, uh, the, then the outcome will be dramatic further on, but I think that's one of the reasons we have the lowest uh, uh, coronavirus infections, confirmed infections in Europe. Although uh, I do have some suspicions if we're, we're really learning the truth, but that's like uh, 
manipulation media. But anyway, I think it's not that bad. So I can criticize my government for most of the things, but closing down the borders and making sure that we're set down and closing up the schools, which is dramatic for my Aikido is for strictly practicing part. But uh, I think as for dealing with the virus, I think it's a good response. So, and what, what I will say to the, at the end is what, I, what I'm uh, becoming more and more aware of what I miss is just uh, uh, the human physical touch with other person. And although we can do a lot of great stuff through Zoom, I'm, I would love to hear from what other people do, what I can share, etc. What I'm really missing is like throwing, being thrown, just the physical <laughs> contact and, and, and the touch from, from other people. So um, that's it. And once again, thank Excellent. you, Jamie, for, for pulling this off. This is just a phenomenal event you're doing. Mm. Thank you, Shemek, really. Uh, I, I think we all miss sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Tesfaya Tekelu is here, Sensei. He is uh, originally from Hawassa, Ethiopia. He is living in Oakland. He also travels to um, to North Africa and Ethiopia quite a bit. He f he founded the first ever dojo in Ethiopia and Hawassa, and the Aikido Association of Ethiopia. A founding member of the direct and director uh, one of the directors of the East African. Association. We first met in 2005. Just so you know, the founder of IP Extensions, Don Levine, Professor Don Levine Sensei, who passed away about four or five years ago, unfortunately, but he left an amazing legacy. He was the most internationally renowned Ethiopian scholar. Tess grabbed his wrist one day, and Tess Vaya was uh, involved with an amazing youth circus and uh, AIDS education, just amazing, um, you know, physical and, and educational stuff in Hawassa. And uh, he grabbed Don's wrist, felt Aikido, and uh, got into Aikido. He's phenomenal, doing amazing work. Uh, love him dearly, and welcome Tess Vyatt, Sensei. Thank you, Jamie. Um, <clears throat> it's wonderful to see all this Aikido family from all over the world. Um, this feels like also the time that, for the first time, I went out of Ethiopia. You know, Don invited me or coming to my country and be able to introduce me to Aikido. Getting an invitation letter from Don Levine, Sensei, and Richard Strozzi, and coming to, um, you know, the first seminar and also meeting Jamie, and the rest has been a history ever since. And I see a lot of familiar faces, people from all over the world who have been a family of Aikido, Ethiopia, and East Africa, but, you know, with the bigger, Aikido family, this is amazing to to connect in these times of uncertainty, and but it's still um, you know distance but connected. Um, we, you know, I as Jamie said, I uh, we ha I have a dojo here. As you can see, I just finished teaching um, my online Zoom class. Um, it's a Destiny Arts, which is a nonprofit that works with young people. Um, is in Auckland, um, and at the dojo we have up to 95 students, but also I go around and work with the city, um, about seven, 800 students in school systems, and that is also, that we're cultivating Aikido and bringing to the younger generation. Um, in terms of Aikido in East Africa, we, I, I travel twice, three times a year. Um, there are students now, we have 11 dojos in, 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 in Ethiopia and seven also African countries, East African countries. We, in 2017, we came together and um, uh, made, became an um, association, East African Aikido Association. We're in touch. Um, as you can, you know, tell in this time of uncertain places, uh, times, um, the, what the West is telling how to stay home and how to stay quarantining sometimes doesn't translate into um, other places because of uh, resource, because of culture, and because of way of life and, and also the resource people can have. Um, I think uh, three, four weeks ago, we kind of had a meeting like this and kind of talked how do we, you know, sharing in place is not possible for a lot of people, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, where, um, you know, five, six, seven, eight people live in the room. And to be able to 
quarantine at home or shelter in place, not ideal. And um, it's like, what is the other p things we can do that kind of match the, the way people live their, their resource? And, you know, a person has to come out of the house to be able to feed their family every day. So we got the young Aikido um, uh, students. Transportation is a problem. You know, a bus has to have 30, 40 people packed to go from one place to another. Um, what we did is we kind of <clears throat> looked around with an Aikido communities who has motorbikes, yeah? Who has motorbikes and, and how do we reach out to people if people are in need of food um, to, be a, to be able to really plan and ahead of time buy, you know, gas for their bikes. One Aikido kid just ride a bike and drop food off and be able to stay connected. Uh, you cannot also, the internet is a problem, so you can't have a Zoom class or Zoom connection, but we have phone where, you know, they stay in, in touch. If there's a problem, one kid, which is also safe to be one person on a bike and put the food and drop it off. Um, so we're in touch every day, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia. So we're doing what, whatever we can uh, to, stay, um, to stay safe and pass this time. We also talk young people here in Auckland and also in, in East Africa, we're saying, what, what is, you know, this an Aikido? There's, there's, a, 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 there's the chaos, but there's, where is the opportunity? What are the openings moved in past the, this? What would come to fruition from this and same times? And it's like to, if, to keep one eye open, what are the possibilities that come, comes out of, out of this? As a society and as a community, how do we not go back to the old system of, you know, um, closing up and shying, running away from it? How do we face and be active, active and then see that is, that is possibilities that might arise in the midst of, uh, from, from these unknown times? There was this, I read this beautiful article by my sensei, Sensei Strozzi um, Heckler, about this pandemic being talked about a war because of what the history humanity has behind it. Every way, the way we are approaching is about it being um, deadly. Yes, it is deadly, but approaching as a war, how do we see within us? How do we take our techniques as Aikido cuts and see us as the thing besides not a war that we have to eliminate a kill and how do we be able to see and blend with it? And it was a beautiful, um, um, writing to see and reflect us as a community with my students here. I, I am teaching up to seven, eight classes a week online um, using imaginary book and a jaw, um, having imaginary ukes. Um, so um, kids are Great. picking it up. Uh, we do, we're doing Schumann, people are moving out, mm -hmm. just, just trying to create or come up with what is there. Yeah. Thank you, Tess, fabulous. Um, and thanks for everybody here. I mean, um, as Rabin Sensei was saying, just embracing the leadership that we all are as martial artists and also as senseis. Um, so um, excellent. Thank you so much for that. And uh, maybe uh, that was a beautiful article that uh, Master Sensei wrote. So maybe we can post it somewhere on AE, um, the yeah. Facebook page. Um, I don't know if uh, hmm. Mohammed Sensei has made it from Egypt or Moody from Rui Sensei from Tanzania, if you have, uh, raise your hand. I do want to say that uh, uh, there were several others. We had so many people already, but uh, I was hoping we have Atif Amin Sensei. He's living in Sweden, but he's originally from Iraq. Wissam Aburai Sensei has been also, uh, is in, from, originally from Baghdad. All of our, the, the Samurai Center people, our Iraqi brothers and sisters training were refugee basically as a result of the war. Wissam is in Canada and sends his, in Montreal and he sends his best. We have people in New Zealand, uh, in Bulgaria, Hannah Sensei, who originally is from Kvar Yassif in Northern Israel, is living in Bulgaria now. We have Bulgarian uh, Aikido, <clears throat> Aikido brothers and sisters who are just amazing. I was hoping they'd make it. And Sadali Salum Sensei sends his best from Algeria. Uh, so there were many more people. We just don't even have time. But uh, thank you, every one of you, for sharing. Uh, we only have a few minutes left, maybe you know, seven, 10 minutes. Um, I'm certainly willing, if anybody else is, to stay longer if you want to uh, talk. But um, if we might have a few of you 
uh, maybe uh, unmute and if you'd just like to share a little bit about what this experience is like for you uh, when you know thank our speakers and also um, you know don't have a lot of time P please be brief but uh, go ahead if you'd like to uh, share something Jamie hi hi oh Danny oh, excuse me I meant to I, Danny appeared this is Danny Hakim Paul Hakim's brother the uncle of our two girls and the founder of Budo for Peace and truly my brother and partner in uh, in all of this uh, good stuff welcome Danny Thank you. I don't want to talk too long, but I want to thank you guys for such a great initiative. It's great to see people that I've uh, been writing to, uh, but I haven't actually seen your faces. So um, anyway, it's great to see you, Robert. I do want to make an announcement, and it's a pretty serious thing. I don't know if you read in the New York Times last week, last Friday, of uh, a person named Rami Aman that was in Gaza and did a Zoom <coughs> conference call. He had 200 people just like this and was talking about the coronavirus in Gaza and wanted to share the information to Israelis. Um, after that, uh, he and four other people and my friend Manar were arrested and they are in jail in Gaza. We are now putting together a, a campaign video uh, which should be out uh, beginning of next week with Bob Marley's son and they're singing One World and we have footage of Rami Aman in a Gaza school singing One World and we want to share that with everyone so anybody that wants to support uh, a peace activist from Gaza who is involved in sport not Aikido but that doesn't really matter um, and he was put in jail because he wanted to speak to other people and it's about freedom, his freedom and freedom of speech. So I will send you, Jamie, uh, the video once it's out so okay. we can share it. The main thing is to try and get them out of jail and, um, and they do amazing work. It's about 200 kids between uh, 20 and 30 years old all they want to do is help the kids and uh, to have peace. So um, I think we should all support them. That's all I wanted to say. It's great to be part of the Budo family. On that note, I just want to say that O Sensei, of course, talked about Aikido as a great way to make all human beings one family, to rely on peace, to activate our manifold powers, and to um, uh, the true, true victory is over the, our own mind of discord within that sees anybody as possibly different or, or uh, an enemy. And certainly COVID of all things is felling us all, <laughs> you know, um, and uh, presenting us all as we've heard with so many of the, the exact same human challenges to, to our health, to our well-being, to our families. And uh, hopefully it will, and we can be part of the whole shift in consciousness and movement to really really embracing one another's as the the brothers and sisters we are working together for peace um and you know through the martial arts the the peaceful warriors not uh not we're not making war on this thing or on anything we we really want to heal and be, be healthy and well and together in fact the word shalom salam it, it comes from the word, root word that means wholeness so thank you for being here danny if anybody would like to just share a little little love or appreciation or question anything uh, briefly before we go and again if we have about three more minutes thank you all for being here i have a thought jamie real quick please, thought, everybody jerry. real quick jamie, this is jerry green i'm really struck by how much this call has demonstrated applications of Aikido that have taken elements of Aikido. We have three or four people from the Applied Aikido Association and we're exploring how do we do Aikido when we're not in the dojo, when we're with people who do not train by being grounded and centered and connecting in other ways. And uh, I feel very encouraged by this phone call. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else? <laughs> Well, then I'm just going to say that, well, firstly, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, it's been awesome to have so many people from around the world all connected at the same time. Uh, it shows you how Aikido can pull us together. Um, these sessions take place every Tuesday, same link, different Thursday. things go on, but you're all welcome to attend any time you want to come. Um, you meant Thursday, Quentin. 
I do mean every Thursday, 7pm 7, 7 London time. I'm not going to say anything else. Just check what the time is in London and that's the time it takes place. Um, also, uh, if you're interested in the work that IKEA Extensions does, please go and visit the website. Connect with Jamie, connect with me, connect with Rob. Find out, add your energy to the work that we do. Uh, we can find a way of uh, using your skills. So if you're interested, please let us know. Become a member. Just support us. I so I, I just okay. go ahead. Go ahead All right. No, um, I just wanted to add: be on the lookout for news in the fairly near term. Uh, mostly through uh, Jamie's work, we're we're putting together a bunch of curricular things for uh, as part of uh, Aikido University, uh, which is an online initiative, um, taking hmm. advantage, as it were, of, of the present moment. Um, and not trying to substitute for, for regular practice, but trying to add resources uh, for everybody's benefit. And IT Extension seems to be developing to be sort of their everything that isn't on the mat Aikido, you know, uh, resource. Um, and there'll be more news and, and stuff coming out about that in, in due course. Uh -huh. Just be on the lookout yeah. for, you know, things from Aikido University. So Jamie, yeah, Jamie, on that note, or, Jamie or, or Quentin, can can you tell us if there's a way to make a copy of the chat? To uh, uh, I will have the chat stored. So if anyone wants the chat, just uh, message me. You can find me on Facebook uh, or Skype fairly easily, and I will send a copy of it to you. I'm also planning to get the recording up on on YouTube as well. Once I've worked out whether it can take a, a recording as long as this. But uh, that's what the plan is. And, you know, on that note, uh, there are really two very big main areas of Aikido. And the one is the obvious one, which is in the dojo and all of our dojo and on the mat and our techniques and our training and all of that, that we do and that we love so much and that that's really the basis for everything. And the other, other half, really, of Aikido is Aikido off the mat, how we take what we do in the dojo out of the dojo into the world. We've all been talking about that into our lives, into our professions. We are creating a whole department within the Aikido University. Um, we for, you know, fully believe that uh, O-sensei was very much wanting us to use Aikido to bring human beings together as one family. Aikido is medicine for a sick world. The same illnesses or sicknesses that you saw uh, 100 years ago, right? Or 50 years ago around nuclear war and environmental destruction and people, uh, you know, seeing each other's enemies and hating rather than loving and connecting and collaborating and cooperating and, and loving and being, being one with each other, helping each other, no matter, no matter what our, our sort of outer physical differences, that Aikido is really a generic practice for that. There are so many people and all these uh, senseis on this call are doing that as well as their um, incredible Aikido work in the dojo and it's so much fun to train together. But that's really what we're all about. And uh, it's certainly time, uh, uh, more, more timely than ever, and the COVID crisis is bringing that to the fore. It does create a lot of new opportunities for us as Aikidoists and Aiki extenders, uh, Aiki appliers, and we're all, we're all t in this together. So um, we're going to formally close. Uh, maybe everybody can, couldn't unmute. We could all say a big uh, domo arigato or whatever your language is. I want to thank all of our speakers so much for saying yes in a short time and being here sharing your hearts and everybody sharing our, our Ike hearts together and our work and again we'll stick around for a little while if you want to chat some more but uh, thank you one and all for being here Hi, hi, yes. Bye, everyone. Very much, Jamie Sensei, sending all of you love, blessing, and good energy. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you, Gary. Thank Maybe you. we'll do another one and with some of our other Actually, senseis. Actually, I want my... <laughs> I, I, yes. And please stay if you'd like to for a little bit, especially, you know, anybody, our speakers or talk to our speakers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. well, that's a cut.
Okay, so yeah, if you left the call, maybe you yeah. have something, uh, perhaps you could share what you think the value of this session was for you. Yeah, it'd be lovely to hear from, from people. And uh, the, every speaker, you were just, like, uh, just wonderful. Thank you for uh, responding to the call and sharing so much. It was really, really terrific. So, but go ahead, everybody else. I'm going to be quiet. Whoever shouts loudest gets heard. Adrian. Thank you. Go for it, Adrian. Someone got something to say. Feel. Uh, Jamie Sensei, I was just wanting to say thank you so much for uh, for bringing this together. It, for uh, for us, Marianne and I here in, uh, in Sacramento, I really just really enjoyed it and really got a lot, really got some good resources. And got to see all these great people all around the world doing all these great things. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jen, Marianne. Thanks for being here. It's great. Thank you, Jamie. I'm going to mute you, and then if you want to talk, you can unmute yourself because you can hear it's chaos. <laughs> uh, Bill, Bill Sensei. So, Bill, you'll have to unmute yourself. Or I can do it for you. You're unmuted, Bill. Achlan, was Achlan? Aikidoka. To me, this is our community, and it's not on the screen, it's behind the screen. And I love the energy that came out. I, so many of you spoke things that really went to my heart. And that's our community. It's a community of heart. Thanks, Bill. Mm. I agree. Well said. Thank you, Bill. And who runs else? Peace Dojos International. Yes. Go, Hugh. Uh, Hugh. Hugh. Do, do you want to unmute? OK. I have done. Uh, Thank you, Quentin. Thank you, Jamie. Um, very, very upbeat, but I want to address uh, rather a critical question or ask you to address a critical question. It does look like this uh, virus is going to hit us in waves and that there's going to be a very long term impact to the social distancing and, and the issue of physical touch, basically, in training. There is a possibility that this is going to go on for years. And if that, is, if that happens, it is also possible that a large senior section of the Aikido world won't be able to get back on the mat again. That is a very harrowing thought <laughs> for all of us uh, SOLers, like the olders, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I would agree. I don't know. We don't know yet. It looks like for sure it's going to be a good, you know, year even till we are really, uh, who knows? So, I mean, what we do is probably the, the most dangerous in terms of contagion and spreading because we are so, in such physical contact and breathing and sweating and, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, we need a vaccine. We need testing. We need many, many things until we can get back to um, some kind of semblance of normal. Um, I think, you know, um, there's so much really that we're just scratching the surface in a sense today and the conditions uh, for many people in, in so many countries and we don't know the, uh, what kind of spread of the disease, disease might happen in areas where they're um, you know don't have the, the same abilities to to have distancing or to have even clean water to have medical facilities uh, we don't even know if there's some kind of worse part of this wave coming in other countries and and some that were you know represented here today um but uh yeah there's there's so much more to consider for sure i Thank think you. i think the the, the 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 sort of where i would lead with my own statement is to say that it, it seems to me that there's a a very great need uh, through this kind of um online activity to accelerate the transmission of knowledge from one generation to the next I think that's true, um, but I think the first thing is I would say, well, well, firstly, Aikido teaches us to live in the here and now and not, not to worry too much about the future. I don't want to spend all my energy thinking about a doomsday scenario, and I don't think it'll actually happen. Uh, the second thing I would say is, well, as we can't grab wrists, what we've really got to focus on is teaching principle, because that's the wisdom that people can pass on. Uh, and so people have to be creative and find new ways of teaching what Aikido is really all about. Um, and, and 
that actually uh, this is what these sessions are supposed to be about. I, I find there's a fine line between uh, kind of really being in the present, which is where we are and we really need to be. We have no idea. There's so much uncertainty and so much unknown for the future. So the fine line between really being in the present and also thinking in advance about the kinds of things that, uh, that you're mentioning. Uh, there's so many things to think about um, in advance and how do we kind of walk those lines um, and keep ourselves you know, calm and flowing in a very present, uh, exceedingly present way in the moment. And I also think that these kinds of networks that we're building and especially a very you know, relatively enlightened minded and hearted people uh, and leaders, which is what we really need to consider ourselves as, as martial arts leaders is, um, is so important that we're, we're doing that work right now and, and, and helping to, to move into that and to create that future. I'd like to pick, pick on that, Jamie, uh, uh, because what you're saying, I think, is really crucial. Because if we, if we focus on the, on the past, we, we feel grief or regret or guilt or, oh, I mean, guilt is, is a choice. I mean, we can do that. But uh, if we focus too much on the future, that brings an anxiety. But uh, very often, if we focus on the present, it turns out that things are actually pretty much okay, uh, as they are. It's our, our uh, worrying about the future and uh, that what brings an anxiety and that actually really has an impact on how we function, how our immune system functions. And, uh, and so being present in the, in, with the current breath, it, it, I mean, if you focus, if I ask you, what, what, what was your experience of your previous breath? You probably can't t tell me that much. If I ask you, what will you be your next breath? You probably can't say too much about that either. But if we ask, uh, okay, can, where are you in your current breath? You can be very accurate about that. And that Beautiful. really means yeah. reality. So, just Thank you, yeah. Cents. Any others we haven't heard from? Or, um, and any speakers, how, um, how are you doing? Just unmute yourself if you want to talk. Hi there. This is Jacqueline from Norway. Mm, excellent. From the beautiful fjords, mm. <laughs> which we cannot visit because it's not essential uh, travel. Mm. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring a picture to you. Um, I'd like to pick on, uh, on um, well, I don't remember who said this. But, uh, yeah, Tasfaya said something about opportunity. And actually, um, we're in the middle of a crisis. But if you define crisis as the, in the Chinese two characters that are made up of crisis, it's danger on the one side and opportunity on the other. So now we can decide which, uh, which wolf we want to feed. If we want to feed the negative wolf or the positive wolf. Uh, and for me, uh, I'm very into finding how to live in the now. What can I do now, here and now with the, with what I have as um, skills and what I have uh, as a network and bring this, uh, this out. Um, so, and another thing I'd like to introduce is we're talking about, uh, uh, not about uh, social distancing, but I'd like to change that into physical distancing. It is a physical distance we have to manage, but uh, when it comes to uh, intimacy. We have a digital intimacy that we can uh, develop right now. And, and this is all these platforms that we're developing now is a different kind of intimacy. Of course, we can touch each other. That's a fact. But we can touch each other in, in other intimate ways, uh, in, a, in a soul, in the development, in the sharing of ideas, into developing the networks, even into bigger areas. For example, I've had a children's class today with 21 people joining because we put up information online, even people who don't have a dojo in their own town join the class. And this is a tremendous opportunity to reach out to new, um, new uh, segments of the population that have not had the opportunity to join Aikido classes. And all of a sudden they can. So, so let's not forget to, to focus on the, the opportunities. And this gives a lot of positivity back to the, to the community. Clear practical thinking as always, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to support what Jackie said uh, in the sense that 
I, we have resources and they are huge. And as Jacqueline and uh, Vitor and uh, Tesfaye all said, this is an opportunity. People are open now because they've been shocked into it as they have not been for a long time. So it would be a shame not to think about that opportunity now and in the immediate future. But I'd like to put a plug in for Paul's, uh, Paul Linden's work uh, because I've found it, uh, his approach to Ike is so brief and so effective. You can, uh, you can be on a, a Zoom call with, with the kids of, and parents uh, in a family and make a difference in a matter of minutes. It's really well worth uh, checking out the uh, uh, embodied peacemaking, Paul Linden. On that note, I'm just going to say, yeah, Paul's work is terrific, and he's doing sessions every Saturday. I think uh, Quentin is hosting that. Um, uh, and we'll put some information on something called COVID Calm, which uh, Mark Walsh, who we know originally from, from uh, Ike Extensions, and he is, uh, uh, you know, kind of um, doing a lot with the embodiment in the world. And so he's created a program. We have about, I'm joined over 100 mental health professionals to, who are all volunteering to do bite-size stress management for healthcare workers. And uh, we'll, I'll type in the chat. Anybody can go there, get on one of the sessions. They start on the hour. They run about half an hour. People can stay for all 30 minutes or whatever they have. But uh, what we do and with centering, with breathing, with grounding, all the, the basics that the essentials of Aikido make it such a powerful difference and so quickly and they shift everything so that we can be in a clear mind and raise our emotional intelligence, feel good, calm ourselves. We really shift our, our stress biochemistry, our neurophysiology, and we can do it so quickly that it's amazing. Um, I just saw Jaffer and his sister uh, in the West Bank. Jaffer, just say hi, unmute and say hello. Uh, it's hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy, I'm, so la uh, I'm sorry for my lating. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's beautiful to see you. Yeah, me Jaffer. too. <laughs> Jaffer, Hi, everyone. Really, we want to, Jaffer should be a professional uh, uh, cyclist and soccer player, and he's, yeah. he was like the absolute star athlete in peace camp. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but yeah, not, not now. <laughs> yeah. He wins everything in his town. He beats all the adults. He's just an amazing athlete, and you can see the beauty. And his sisters sing like uh, incredibly there in Tulkaram also. Thank you. Uh, so much love in your faces. <laughs> Thank you yeah, very, but, very much. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I broke my hand, so I can't oh, now. Oh, no. Okay. Uh oh Well, it, that's the thing. It has time to heal, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, really, the, the, the spirit in everyone is so incredible, and the talents, uh, uh, athletically, artistically, leadership uh, with everybody here. So I just wanted to say hi to you guys, and anybody yeah. else, me uh, too. if you'd like to share, yeah. please do. I wanted to add to something that Jackie said. She said uh, that this was a time of opportunity and how people were coming to these online sessions who wouldn't okay. come to the mat or haven't come to the mat. And uh, I'm always reminded that though, since he said Aikido was a way to reconcile the world, it's my touchstone in Aikido. And I always feel that he never really imagined that the world would all appear on the mat. So presumably he thought that we would be going out and spreading that message off the mat. So here's a brilliant time to be telling people about what Aikido can do without them having to come to the mat. And maybe this is something that we want to carry on even post COVID, these sorts of sessions where we can get the message of Aikido out there. I wanted to add, if I could, um, following up on the, the idea of opportunity, uh, one of the more thoughtful essays I've read recently um, talked about how there will be all sorts of pressure to return to normal. When we actually have an opportunity to go, oh, you know, when we, when we turn the factories off for four weeks, the sky is green, the rivers are, are clean, the, you know, there's all sorts of things, there's all sorts of good reasons to really fully embrace this, oppor the opportunity this moment to embrace the possibility of what, how else could we be? Um, and, and not just revert to, this is how it was, these are the forces at work, and they should be unchallenged. I'd like to Absolutely. second that. 
I want to extend that to another opportunity that occurred to me going back to our conversation and when we touched the fear of not being able to get on the mat again. And that is to open our minds to the possibility that um, by teaching, by learning principles uh, of Aikido, that people may well learn how to deal with an actual wrist grab that we think requires being in a dojo to learn. Uh, I was approached by somebody in the swimming pool who read books about Aikido. And he asked me, he said to me, you look like you, you swim like you look, you, like you, you, you train in Aikido. In the pool. <laughs> and he got that from a book. So um, I think that the principles of Aikido offer great promise to what we're talking about. Thank you, Jerry. Bonnie, yes, I was going to ask you to say something from Alaska. <laughs> if I may, Bonnie I'm from Alaska, to to sorry, too late. Um, I was actually Great. in a Zoom class with the sensei who was giving me individualized training with a boken, helping wow. to correct my form, which was, I think, part of what this group was discussing. Um, I'm new, came back to Aikido after a while, so this is a uh, very Shoshin perspective. Um, I think what or I, what I feel the COVID situation now is doing that helps us is it's giving us all a fresh start of Ai Shoshin. So beginner's mm. mind. In Shoshin, one of the characters is um, Kokoro, which isn't just mind, it's heart, spirit, and mind, which mind's connected to the body. So this is giving us an extreme fresh start to look at the world, Aikido, ourselves from a new perspective in a harmonious view. Um, not being able to train with people on the mat, it has its disadvantages with the physical aspect of Aikido, in my opinion, with the techniques, but with the principles, with the formless Aikido, the bigger picture that goes beyond just what we do on the mat, I feel that it's, for me, helping my my, 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 my spacing, my timeless awareness with with those I'm communicating with on Zoom. So one-on-one, -on -one, it's much easier with the spacing. We can practice attacks by saying, okay, I'm doing a showman. Okay, I'm doing a watershed. And you can work through the words as well as the physical actions and help, um, as a teacher, help the student work on their timing internally. And as a student, help to listen better. Because for me, I tend to talk more than I listen. So this situation is helping me. Um, it does help with the back to the basics uh, for me. Military background, going back to the basics, the KISS acronym, keep it simple, sensei. Um, this seems to be the perfect time as a student to bring it back to what's important with Aikido. Is it important I put my finger right here when I do the initial touch for this move? Or is it important that I establish that heart to heart connection with my partner first as we go into harmoniously guide Uke to the ground safely. Um, so just, uh, I tend to babble, apologize, almost done. I'm loving the increased awareness this individual time is giving us in the busy world, or especially as a student, oh, did I remember the word correctly? Oh, am I late for class? Is my belt tied correctly? Can my teacher read my mind? Because I know some of them can do that. Oh no, they know what I did last summer. <laughs> you know? So this situation is helping to, for me, calm down, go back to the basics, focus on that, that single breath. In every class we hear, student breathe. Well, we forgot how. How about inhale, exhale? You know, slowly showing how, which is something that via Zoom, the social media, I'm having a more personal experience with many senseis. Um, with Whitehead Sensei with the Boken, with Nado and Moon Senseis via Zoom. Those are phenomenal centering, centering um, Zooms. And I've been um, going to different dojos and experiencing different ways that different people speak to the same thing, breathe to the same thing, present the same thing. And on the, the Shugio path, the spiritual forging path of trying to polish the mirror, seeing how many people react and communicate with Aikido being communication from the heart. Um, it's helping to see myself better. It's almost like this whole situation is allowing a different transmission of Aikido instead mm -hmm. of the physical, 
the the bio connections um i feel that it's helping us focus more on the formless aikido that i've read about that seems only there for the more advanced practitioners or that they they only allude to in stories of osensei so forgive my ramble thank you for listening i love all of you <laughs> that was fabulous to listen to you you could just uh, be our teacher that was beautiful and uh, I love how you emphasized uh, Kokoro, you know, really coming from the heart and the kind of different, a, a complete reset. And we get, you know, you reminded me, I just want to share this with everybody. I'm a professional golfer, many of you know that. And a student came to me a while back and he said, you know, the problem is the golf ball. It's like people make practice swings, they do all this great stuff, and, but then you put the ball in front of them and they just, ah, go bonkers, you know, they can't do it because of the ball. <laughs> and so he said, what if we played golf without the golf ball? And so we started to do that. We went through all the motions without a ball, but like you tee it up and you, you know, make your swing, practice swings, and then you, you know, make a swing without the ball there so you can just be fine. And then you can, uh, in your mind, decide how far did it go? Where did it go? You could make a, you know, a long shot, an eagle. You could do all these great things. It's just like to play without the ball. And then we go back to the ball because, I mean, you do have to hit a golf ball eventually, but to have that kind of training. And it's almost like without, having each other there to throw, you know, to do that, the throw and get into that part of it, which brings out our muscles and our egos and our reactivity and all those things. We are in this space that you just really described so beautifully of uh, without our actual physical uke there, we kind of can step back, really go inside as Spiro started, uh, since they started to talk with us about, about just that inside Aikido and, and to, to really work on the feelings and the philosophies and all the other parts of Aikido and the extending Aikido um, because, because we don't have that other actual person there. So it's really kind of interesting. It reminded me of, um, you know, playing with that, golf without ball. <laughs> if, if I may just add on to that, something that came up in class recently before the, the epidemic, um, we were practicing gel removal. And the way that they were grabbing the Joe just seemed confusing to me. Maybe it was what I was visualizing subconsciously. I'm not sure. So I asked my sensei, what weapon are we simulating this is? He said, oh, a spear. And I was thinking about it and I swept with sweeping the mat afterwards and it was a big wide push room and I started spinning it. I'm like, what if I attack you with something like this to throw dirt on you? Can you take my weapon away that way? So some of the different visual ideas, if somebody's attacking you with a pencil in the office, can you do the same thing? Um, I'm here outside right now, and I woke up this morning thinking, Aikido with a charging moose. No. Can you do it? So I'll just leave it with that. <laughs> the, different, the different ideas Off the line. Are playful and vibrant as just someone who's loving the individual time. Like, thank you for sharing the golf story. I think yeah. we have to remind you about social distancing, Bonnie. Keep away from the moose. <laughs> Sylvana, so I wanted to hear from you. Where are you and who are you? Ah, uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Aikido community. So good to tune in. My name is Sylvain Brown. I'm in Southern Oregon. I train with Michael Friedel Sensei at Ashland Aikikai. Mm -hmm. I am a novice to Aikido. I've been training for two years. Um, and with this recent uh, situation that came up, I sort of fell off of my personal practice at home recently. And uh, it feels really good to be here and be re-inspired by all of the connection and community and reminders of energy. So I'm uh, feeling life circumstances have been unusual, of course, for all of us. Um, but I'm feeling re-inspired to commit back to my practice that I've been continuing for two years. It's so good to see Bonnie, who I was just training with in Boulder, Colorado, just uh, two months ago or so. Uh, yeah, really sweet to see how small this Aikido world is and yet also how global and wide it is at the same time. It was very inspirational to me to see all these different perspectives and different people from different cultures and languages and what their life in this time is like and in general. Um, so yeah, thank you all for holding this meeting. It's been very beautiful and very inspirational. Thank you. Joanna. Could you say hello? Hello, how are you? Yeah. Um, I'm Victor, student from Brazil. Excellent. Um, and it's been quite a quite a crazy times these past weeks. How many self body knowledge I get 
from these online practices, from online meetings. And um, first of all, I, I keep reading a book from Jorge Stor Stobart Sensei. He was, he was a Belgian and he had a dojo in Morocco and Portugal. And one thing when I read about him that he says that the dojo is not between walls. It's on the universe. It's on everybody. And mm -hmm. on my first practice, I really felt that. It was just like uh, when we gather our group back again in these online practices, I felt the same way that I feel at the dojo, at the, uh, at the tatami. So uh, this, all of these practices have been so important for that. It's like... Uh, I, I wake up my body memory of the movement, of the touch with each one that I practice like several times a, day, a week. Um, of course, we miss the, the contact, the, 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 the physical touch. But at the same time, when we imagine this imaginary partner that of course we know or somebody that we don't know, we kind of feel this energy circulating in our bodies in the practice. Uh, so it's impressive how, how I started to, I really believe in this universal dojo. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing about hearing, uh, that I, I keep hearing all of you saying, um, on our way back, how are we gonna, that, that I keep thinking these days, how are we gonna behave, uh, sorry, the, the clock. Um, how are we, how are we gonna get back to the dojo to the to the practice? How much care are we gonna take? We are in a slowing down move right now with all of our practices, and how is gonna be our way back? Are we gonna be more careful? How is gonna be this like touch with the other, this welcoming, this caring, this respect? Uh, we usually. Um, have some, some fears at the, at the Aikido practice of, about hurting ourselves and stuff. Now I think we'll have to, to face another kind of fear, fear about this contact back again. And I think it could be like a new, uh, 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 like an opportunity to, to connect different to our, to our partners. To, uh, I don't know, with, with more slowly, more hearing the, the other one body. Um, so something, a lot of things like that keep, keeps going in my mind. Uh, mm. And today also we had a practice for women uh, of our group the early morning and when it finished, it was very special because all of us said, oh, we are, we, we are fulfilled from us, from our, from our practice, from our gathering. So this is very special, I really recommend Everybody that could do could be like only two people practicing or five, ten people. It doesn't matter. It's just feeling that you belong to a group. You feel the the fulfillment, the happiness to be gathering again, the contact, and the missing of of physical touch start to feel like a good missing, not not a not, not a painful missing. So that's it. Thank you. It's beautiful. That's so beautiful. By the way, I'm thinking of organizing a special women's Zoom um, Zoom training. Uh, oh, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll put that together. Yeah, well, I'll let you, I'll let you all know, and uh, it'll be it'll be coming up soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I Thank you. It. Well said. Beautiful. Still, I'm on mute, Phil. Phil, you are unmuted. Phil, did you have something to say? You stuck your hand up. Oh no, that was just waving. <laughs> oh, okay. Marcos, Marcos, who are you? Marcos? Say hello. hello. I'm, I'm from Brazil too. And I enjoy a lot the meeting and we are like in listen three persons we we are in the dojo here. We still practice a little bit and we do online courses. But uh, mainly thing we do in the in the zoom is basically this type of conversation where we we listen to each other and uh, maybe somebody give a, an idea a poem or a song or or anything that touches the heart or 
anything that's happening, but outside the, the, the media troubles. So it's, it's a very good practice also. So this type of conversation, it really, it really binds us. It makes us feel very good, very connected, still connected. So thank you for the, the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Nikos and Laura, hi. You are unmuted, or I'm trying. You have to unmute yourselves. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you all. We also have our friend David. Hey, everyone. Excellent. <laughs> um, Dave came to us from Japan, and we were hoping to have a series of seminars <laughs> together, Ooh. but all that was uh, cancelled, so he's just been hanging out with us in isolation for four weeks. Yeah, but we're, mm -hmm. we're doing kind of like online introductions to, to Iaido, kind of like a special kind of like um, mm. Iaido school, but he has been training for many years, and uh, we're kind of like you know, reaching out to people who may uh, are interested. Every Saturday morning we have classes. Okay, and anyone interested, let me know and I can send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> we have our massive awesome. garden and we're uh, out there every day. <laughs> so yes, kind of like we're adding the, 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 the crisis perhaps a, a little bit more easily than others. <laughs> we're, we're lucky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great to see you guys. Mm -hmm. Great to see you too. Deborah, how are you? Uh, well, right now my um, heart is pretty much overflowing. <laughs> um, hearing from so many amazing people over the last two hours. Um, so yeah, join in saying thank you to to you, Jamie, for organizing it, and Quentin and Robert, and um, to everyone who's been participating. I'm just very grateful. Very, very grateful. Wonderful you made it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Dimitra, how are you doing? Thank you for starting us off so so beautifully. And Spiros. I just am here myself. Yeah, I just have been really listening to everybody here and I feel so touched. It's so great. I want to thank Quentin and you for organizing this and I feel so touched, especially when I see people here that I hadn't seen for since five years ago when Ike extended in Greece, um, like Vitor from uh, Brazil and Tess Faye and so many other people. It's so touched and it just feels like um, I uh, like a global family. It just uh, I really feel that. Um, that we have we are probably been asked to really see the dojo as an open space with no walls it's like it's a time for that because it's like times are requiring this and it's like something has been given to us to see things this way just to to force us to to guide us to practice aikido and contact with each other in a different way than what from what we've been used to do and we're open to this, uh, and I agree with other speakers like Samek in the past. In the past, that we just have to be in the now because the future. There are endless possibilities about the future, and it's there's no reason to to waste our energy and mind thinking about the endless possibilities of the future. We just have to stay in the now and concentrate what what is the best we can do for ourselves and the the, the world at large right now this is spirituality what we can do now mm. right now i think deborah deborah asked in the chat uh if this crisis changed our way of of viewing aikido or practicing or uh, i for me it, it it's changing it's, what, what are we practicing uh what are we what are we practicing why why we practice so much and 
we we're also seeing a lot of online classes uh, senses that are teaching and then you can see what are the focus what are they focusing on teaching online what kind of principles and it's it's interesting it's interesting because for i don't know what's happening for you guys that teach it's a challenge for me to choose what what are the what are the things that i'm going to to pass now online it's it's um so it's it's uh I'm, I'm trying to read more to go back to the basics the the this invisible thing that i think it was bonnie that said the thing that it, it's supposed to be more advanced and but at the same time it should be more basic it should be present since the beginning why we practice what when we start the practice what are we uh, what are we thinking about right and so i think joana i have some students here joana maria antonia <laughs> and it will be very interesting to see how we're going to res um uh, how do you call it um to think again how to give a different meaning for Aikido now. I don't, some will continue the path, but I think most of us will rethink things. Uh, Marcos, Joana, uh, we are also practicing Kinomichi, that is from uh, Noro Sensei, that was one of Fushideshi's from, from O Sensei. And in the Kinomichi, it's, they focus a lot on this connection of the Kokoro, the, the, the heart connection and the openness of the body and this, this way of being in the world, open, open to be more um, available for the other. And, and then this open dojo, it's, uh, it's really challenging. <laughs> we, we, all of us that have like, well, I don't know how many years, 20, 30 uh, years of practice, we will start again. <laughs> Not, uh, we'll, practice, we'll start again in a different mat, I think. Different challenges. That's why I, I'm, I'm with you, it's like the guys, uh, it's kind of Aikido, but we have to do it differently right the same but different <laughs> what's quite different interesting is how this period of time has ripped away the barriers that allowed people to train in other associations from before that was a problem and now it doesn't seem to be and i mm -hmm. think it's great to hear so many people talking about oh i might have to rethink what i thought aikido was i think it's wonderful news i want to give yeah. a shout out to adrian who's on this call because um He's been uh, created a, a website, well, a Facebook group, basically, where he's been listing all the online classes there are, which I think is a fantastic initiative. And, and he's been visiting all the classes and finding out what they're, what they're all about, which is, I think, even better. So, Adrian, Adrian's originally from Romania, but he lives quite local to me. Do you want to just say a word? Hey, just say hello to everybody. Uh, sorry, I was a bit late. Uh, I had my class uh, on Zoom, and uh, I was late for this one. Uh, but I, and then obviously I had to tidy up and all that, so you, I apologize, you didn't see me really. Um, so I um, really did my, my stuff after all. Uh, I'm so sorry I, I was not visible, but actually it was like, I had the feeling of a very good radio program, if you know what I mean. So I put the phone in my pocket, I put the mats away, and you were with me all the time, guys. So I was just <laughs> uh, trying to see who was there, and they put the put it back in the pocket. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, it, it's very interesting, uh, very, uh, lots of knowledge here and I'm, I'm very happy to, to see that it's, you, you've creating guys, the, the organizers, uh, such a good uh, um, feeling, positive feeling. Um, and yeah, probably that's all about um, Aikido. It starts with um, positiveness and uh, uh, it is a martial art, but starts with what supposed you go to a dojo to start with, you know, you, you're welcome, hopefully, yeah. So it's all 
Oh, good. And someone said about, um, sorry, I'm jumping to something else now. Some, someone said in this uh, time of crisis, um, yeah, we need to uh, get together, but also to go to ourselves and, and revisit the basics. So I think the harmony, yes, has to be with the partner, but it has to be with yourself. And going back to basics, that's all about. And how you get back to the basics is, oh, it was said here by the people, yeah, it's about breathing, it's about Tyson Bach, it's about the, the basic, basic that probably, yeah, you didn't explain much to your students, you assume that they know it, but then you start to reflect, see other people doing it on Zoom or, or videos. Now there are lots of uh, YouTube videos. So it's uh, inspiring in the same time because of this self-isolation, we try to get out more ourselves and to share more. And that's fantastic. As before, uh, like Wendy said, there was more sort of competition. Yeah, the doors were not open all the time from one association to another or you know, memberships, uh, insurances, uh, make sure you bring your insurance with you, blah, blah. Now it's not. Insurance are up in the air. So you, mm -hmm. we take the risk by connecting. Yeah. Um, which is great, I think. The, some barriers are down. So we, we can focus on, on positives and we can find lots of positives in all the, and, and opportunities, actually. And to our opportunities, um, yes, uh, we try to create a group of dojo at home. Um, Aiki Dojo at home is, is on Facebook. It's for connecting teachers, instructors with uh, students. Because at the moment we have websites uh, or rather Facebook pages for students only or for instructors only. So we try to create the bridge. So basically we just try to promote uh, whoever has a class on Zoom or uh, live on, on Facebook or YouTube videos, they can post there. And everybody can see and can join in or can just, you know, practice uh, as they see. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, it's brilliant. Thanks, thanks, Adrian. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Maybe we forgot to check if they were all insured. God, what a risk. Is that? Uh oh, what have we done, Quentin? <laughs> uh, well, it you know, it feels like we all just want to hang out. It's so wonderful to be together. Um, it's been uh, more than a few hours, but uh, maybe we'll do, uh, you know, we had some more senseis that we really could, uh, and countries to talk with. Maybe we'll uh, organize a, a next one of these in a, in a little while. I know they wanted to participate, so uh, we'll see what we can do if you're interested. Um, I wanted to share one thing, is, it, it's just one line. I'm just making a video about this soon. Um, I'm writing a book, and uh, you all have sort of reminded me of this, um, that there's a Jewish proverb that says we have two ears and one mouth that we should listen twice as much as we speak. Um, so I don't know, I'm Jewish, I don't know we follow that enough, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's been great listening to everybody. But uh, what's so interesting is if we think about, we do have two ears, two hands, two legs, the, the things we have two of and the things we have one of. And the things that we have one of are all on our center line, right? So we have sort of our spirit, our crown chakra, if you want to talk about chakras or energy centers. But we have our minds and our thoughts and our wisdom. We have our, uh, our communication, our mouth, our throat. We have our heart, our heart uh, intelligence and just our heart. And we get down to our belly and to our root chakras and down to, to um, you know, that, that strong core, that strong center column where that unites the, the left, the right, the both ears, the both hands. And it's really about that centering practice and having all of those things aligned or what we think what we feel, what we express, and to come from, from a real grounded, uh, deep core, deep belly power. So, you know, it feels like the, the invitation, the opportunity right now is to really be in our strong core and to really align, and from that place to reach out and to connect with each other. So um, thank you for being on the center line, <laughs> on the center Aikido line uh, together. Uh, just thank you all so much. This really has been a beautiful gathering, and um, thanks, Quentin. Thanks, Robert, for and, and you know, Ike Extensions for helping that to happen. And uh, just one and all, thank you for kind of responding. And I hope that we can continue to grow this and uh, and to support each other because there, you know, there's a lot of positivity. And the truth is, it's it's difficult. These are really tough times, challenging times. Uh, we got both sides of that. And if we can stay together in that center, I think we can. Um, stay in the present and move to a better future.
I just like to uh, say a big thank you to Jamie for reaching out to so many people and making this happen. Uh, Quentin, of course, for, for having the platform for it, but Jamie did a lot of a lot of work. Yep. So she did. So thank mm. you very much. Thank you, Jamie. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sensei. If you would like something like this to happen again, what would be really interesting to thank know you, would be what would you like to see presented on that sort of session? So if we bring people from around the world together, what topic could we cover? Bill, do you want to unmute yourself or do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, I'm unmuted. Uh, and uh, the thing that's dear to my heart is the opportunity that uh, so many people mentioned. And for once, parents and children are at home available and hungry for something that makes sense. Ike makes sense. That's something we could all do, but we need more tools. Okay. Great. Okay, guys, then I'm going to formally close the room and thank you once again for coming. Um, Quentin, um, one subject maybe. Um, uh, I would like to hear more about countries that we, um, at least here, I don't hear much and what they're doing. Like the spy is talking about what's happening in East Africa or in Kenya, uh, what's happening there, and, and what kind of solutions they're having. Uh, we also hear in, in some communities they 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 have solutions that are very uh, fantastic solutions, um, ways of organizing. So I think this would be a good a good topic as non non Aikido practitioners doing like Aiki principles in their communities and doing things that could be not not from us but from all of from all over the world we can see principles being applied and, and, and applied we could put together a session of uh, what we call applied aikido so people who are taking their aikido skills off the mat and using it in their professional lives we've got quite a few connections in that direction and, and we could bring them together and they could talk about the work they're doing how would that sound uh, sound good do you want a thumbs up from people if that sounds interesting and I want to emphasize what Vito just said. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to reach out to new people. Not only applied Aikido is, is one, one subject, but the other subject is to how do we appeal to other people? I mean, to show the, the breadth of uh, what Aikido is. It's not only throwing each other on the ground. That may be uh, scary to some people, but what's what we find is, is that uh, family members or friends that are watching people mm -hmm. taking a class, all of a sudden they jump on the map because it wasn't yeah, that yeah. bad. And it's exactly. interesting and I'm bored and this is more interesting and, and then actually joining. So we're reaching a whole, a whole bunch of new people. So how, how do we get out there to the people who have, haven't heard of, from, of Aikido? And how do we attract a, a new? So I'm, I'm thinking of this is one of the steps we do for the post COVID era is recruiting new members now that we can reach new people. So that's, that would that be an like excellent... Uh, hmm? That sounds like a great weekly session, actually. That might be something that we bring in as a, a topic to debate. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've been going now for, oh, two hours 20. So I think it's time <laughs> to say good night here. <laughs> so you're a fantastic lot. Thank you so much for making this so good. Bye one and all. Yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Come on, we got to all go. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Stay well, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, no, bye -bye. don't go. We're going. I know. We don't want to go. We just want to hang out. It's, it's so beautiful. Now.